Well, thank you guys for joining in. Uh, and again, very warm welcome to our webinar today on how to engage your audience at remote meetings and virtual events. So we are here today to discuss the engagement, the interaction, uh, which is of course very important. And this is not just due to the situation today, but scientific fact here, did you know that on average, we pick up our phone up to five, 58 times a day. So this is the standard. You can actually, some of us do it even more often. But what does that mean really is that we get really easily distracted. So the importance of engagement is really, really crucial. And uh, that's why we are here in this webinar today to discuss it. And uh, when I say we are here with you today, I mean myself. So my name is Christina Kumar and I'm in charge of education and outreach. And my colleague, uh, Susanna, uh, is the head of user education at Slido. Uh, we both work at Slido. Now, those of you who don't uh, know Slido, it's a web-based tool that is used at meetings and virtual events to increase interaction. So we uh, have uh, quite a lot to do with interaction on everyday basis. Uh, and just to kind of guide you through very quickly what is ahead of us today. So first of all, we are going to look at uh, how you actually engage uh, your a remote audience, we are going to give you some tips, uh, including Slido, but also not including Slido and just some really like relevant tips that we hope you find, find very useful. After that, we are going to look at how you actually set it up. So these few things that we are going to show you, uh, we'll just run through some very basic setup. And after that, we are going to jump into the Q&A round where we are going to address all of your questions. Now, speaking of questions, uh, throughout the entire time, you're more than welcome to submit your questions at already mentioned slido.com. Simply uh, enter the event code yes remote. And throughout the entire webinar, while we are speaking, you can just submit your questions and we will get to them at the very end. And of course, uh, also please feel free to upload the questions that you like from the other participants. Maybe you find them very relevant, very useful. So we, you would like them to be addressed as first. Great, but before I give the word over to Susanna, I actually have a few questions for you just to find out who we have on the call today, because of course we cannot really uh, speak with you one by one. So we would love to find out who is in our audience today. So the first question I would love to ask is if you are already running all remote meetings or virtual events. So what is your current situation? Are you pros already or are you new to the situation? Or are you running hybrid meetings, meaning that some people are in person and some people are joining in remotely? So what is your, what is your current state? All right. So majority of you are new to the all remote meetings. We have no pros on the call today. <laughs> For the first time ever, I think. First time ever, so no pressure, great. <laughs> uh, some of you are not yet running any remote meetings, but you would like to in the future, great. Perfect. So looks like majority of you is uh, new to the remote meetings. So I guess you, are, uh, you have landed uh, correctly in this webinar. And the second question I have for you is what size are the meetings and events or events that you are right now running? So what type? How many people do you have normally in your audience? Okay, let's see how you vote. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, it's undecided between 25 and 50 and the half of you is running large scale events or meetings for 100 and more people. Okay, perfect. Nobody is running meetings with 70 people. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so we have a, an important piece of information for us as well. Great, and last question before we jump into the content is, what would you say are your biggest struggles when it comes to hosting or organizing these remote meetings or virtual events? You can pick, you can select more than just one. So feel free if you feel like you really are struggling with more than just one, feel free to, to select those as well. And let's see what your biggest struggles are. Okay, presenters are lacking experience with hosting remote meetings. Yes, that's a very uh, popular one. Keeping people engaged, of course, throughout the meeting. It's uh, so far winning. Handling the AV setup. 
not being able to see the audience to get live feedback. Now, just to kind of clarify why you see the uh, percentages and they don't add up to 100, this is because you can uh, select more than one option. So for the math geeks there. Okay, perfect. So keeping people engaged throughout the meeting seems like the biggest struggle you are uh, guys right now facing, uh, which is great because uh, we are going to talk about it a lot today, but we are also going to talk about uh, the uh, rest of the rest of the struggles. All right, so thank you very much for those and uh, keep your uh, smartphones ready because we will try to be interacting with you throughout the entire webinar. But now I will uh, finally keep quiet and pass the word over to you, Zana. You don't have to keep quiet. This is good, but um, good, good news. Uh, I think most of the struggles that you mentioned in the poll before, um, we will definitely cover at least a little bit. Um, but we, what we want to, you know, focus most on is how to engage your audience, because also that's something that you all said is probably the biggest struggle. And, you know, I'm not going to start with rocket science here. Uh, honestly, What's the most important thing whenever you're running in, uh, engaging remote meetings or when you want to run engaging remote meetings is actually getting yourself ready. Um, if you look, about, look on the stats here, on average, people spend five hours and three minutes in meetings, but they spend four hours, 15 minutes preparing uh, for them uh, a week. Sorry to not mention that. So it doesn't change when you're running remote meetings as well. And preparation is definitely the key. So when we look at some things to prepare, and again, if you have a pen and paper, please do write these down. Um, I don't think that I can stress it enough that it's really important to get prepared. First of all, rehearse the technology. Honestly, Christina and I had some troubles before we started the whole webinar here. So it's crucial not to start like on the time. Um, and that's when you actually join as a presenter, but actually get, give yourself a little bit of time before the meeting starts, test the camera, test the sound. I think the sound is usually the most important. And also test your Wi-Fi um, because that might be the little bit of an issue these days. Also explore your video conferencing tool well. Um, for example, for us, we played music at the beginning and that's because we're using Zoom and there's an option to share sound. So we shared computer sound, we had a little bit of fun at the beginning and also changed the whole atmosphere. It wasn't as dull, maybe just us speaking, but also a little bit of sound in the background. Make sure you dial in at least 10 minutes in advance to set it up. I think that was the case also for us or maybe like 13 minutes. Um, even though we've been running this webinar, we always make sure that we join in a little bit early to, to check whether everything works. Make sure you agree uh, whether who is going to move for, through the slides. This is something for uh, if you have more than just one presenter. For example, us here, our setup is that uh, Christina has remote control. So whenever she's running her slides, she's using her mouse. And when I'm running my slides, I'm, I'm using it myself. I'm, I'm moving it myself. So that's very important, especially when you have uh, two and more speakers. Um, also, record the meeting. Uh, that's something that is being very useful these days and people are really asking for it. Even when you have global teams, somebody is already sleeping when you're running your meeting. You can even write a little bit of a note next to the camera saying, are you recording? Uh, so that's like a small tip you can have and then send the recording later on. If you're going, uh, if you're going to ask if we're going to share the recording and the slides, Yes is the answer, uh, so we'll get a follow-up email for sure. Make sure uh, these days when everybody's at home, uh, internet can go down in a minute. Um, and honestly, having a mobile hotspot ready um, in case this happens is a crucial, crucial thing to do. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, find a tutorial uh, because it saved my life several times. Also, if you can um, invite people to join in a little bit earlier, especially when it's like an internal meeting. Uh, one of our colleagues also, whenever we are having a whole company meetings, she always writes to us, join in a few minutes earlier. Um, first of all, you can uh, chat with the people, break the atmosphere a little bit, but also you make sure that you start on time and you don't have to wait for people joining in. Whenever you're running um, remote meetings, um, it might happen that there is awkward silence. Nobody's answering, nobody's saying anything. And when you are in the room with the people present, at least you get the nods of the heads of the people. 
but being online, you just have to be ready for awkward silence. And it's okay that it's silent for a moment. Um, also, people might be just afraid to speak up. Um, and that's why Slido comes here. And that's why Christina said, feel free to pose your questions throughout the whole webinar because you don't want to interrupt the speakers. Of course, this is a webinar, so you're not allowed to speak up, but whenever you are running a meeting, it's the same thing. So you don't want the people to actually interrupt or you don't want to interrupt the speaker. You don't know when to speak and so, and so on and so on. So we have a lovely story for a client of ours who was having one or two questions for remote meeting, but eventually once they started using Slido, they got 25 questions. And honestly, why are you giving the content? Why are you delivering the content? You want to hear what the people want to know. You want to know what, it, what interests them. And that's what you can figure out through the questions. So speaking about that, I really want to ask you, if you do have questions, do submit them uh, through Slido throughout the whole webinar. We will have ample time to go over them at the end. And with this, I'm going to give the word to Christina. Thank you, Susanna. So Susanna has walked us through uh, the preparation phase, what you need to do ahead of the event uh, in order to prepare yourself. But uh, if we want to already look at the uh, entire meeting or event, so let's look at the very start and the kickoff of the event, which is, of course, a very crucial uh, point in a meeting. Um, the first thing we need to realize is that we are going to present remotely. This is a very different thing to presenting in live, in person, because it's really like if you were speaking to a brick wall, which you literally sometimes are, even in, in this picture, you just really have the computer there, you have no reactions back from the people, you cannot even judge from the body language, or even if they are yawning or not, you really have no reactions, you have nothing to really judge how the audience is doing. And that's why it's super important that you uh, engage and interact with them from the very, very beginning of your meeting or event. So you really, if you engage in the very first moment, just like we did, for example, today, we ask you just a very simple question, where are you joining us from today? But we already, by doing that, we already set that kind of expectation from you guys. We really expect from you to interact with us today. So you don't want just people to be like uh, putting them in the shoes of like passive observers, but you really want them to interact throughout the entire time. And that's why you need to kind of stress that expectation at the very beginning. Now, there are a few uh, ways how you can do that. Uh, for example, you can uh, kick it off with some fun questions. So we ask you a boring question, where are you joining us from? But for us, it's a very interesting thing to know uh, all these different locations. But you can also use humor and ask something like, uh, have you ever joined an online meeting in your pajamas or from your bed and so on. You can really uh, be creative and ask anything that uh, has to do with fun because humor, of course, puts the pressure off. People are immediately relaxed and they really already feel like they can share. And that this is where you want to really uh, put them right at the beginning of your event. Alternatively, uh, if you feel brave enough, you can also let uh, the guys online or your audience online shape the agenda of the meeting or event itself. So we've done this a few times um, in this very same webinar when we actually uh, gave uh, the people the same question that we asked you today about their biggest struggles, but we gave that limitation of the top three struggles. Then we had a list of uh, the struggles and according to this list, we actually only talked about the top three struggles. So really, we literally let the people shape the agenda of our webinar. You can do this really with any kind of topic, but you really literally let the people decide at the beginning what they want to talk about, what they want to hear about. And this is really a nice way and um, it's, it's very great. You have to be prepared but uh, it's really a great and popular format among, among the people. Now, important enough is to explain to the people that you will be using the polls throughout and really, really give the reason why behind. So why are you using them? Because you want to engage and you are actually interested in their opinion. It's not just to really uh, insert some kind of piece of interactive activity, but you interact because you are interested in their ideas, you're interested in their opinions, and this is important to say at the beginning as well. Uh, equally important is to mention what we did at the, at the beginning, that uh, people can submit questions during the entire meeting. 
sometimes people will simply forget until uh, they are able to ask the questions at the end. So it's really nice to kind of remind them at the start that there is no need to wait and they can do it throughout the entire meeting. And uh, my favorite tip, I'm not sure if you've ever been in a meeting and you've tried to celebrate something or give somebody, give somebody some appraisal. Well, if you try to uh, clap in an online meeting, it can be very awkward, especially if everyone is muted. So we uh, suggest that you agree on a gesture that you use with your cameras turned on to replace the in-person clapping. So some companies, they do something like this, or you can shake the hands, or you can just do thumbs up or a simple smile, any kind of gesture, just simply agree on it so everyone is aligned. Uh, you can adjust it to your culture, you can adjust it to your company culture, but just make sure you agree on something because otherwise it just gets awkward. And as Susanna was talking about the awkward silence, this is one of the really points when you don't want to have that awkward time, when you really want to celebrate and you want to give that, uh, feeling of celebration to the people. And a few focus hacks uh, to what you can uh, tell your online audience when they can do at the, at the very start of the meeting or event. So if it's possible, if the internet connection allows them to do, please ask them to actually turn their cameras on. It's been proven that 82% of users are less likely to multitask if they have the cameras on which is already giving you a, a great chance that they will actually listen to you throughout the entire meeting. So try to ask them to turn their cameras on. If you are worried that they might be worried they don't look good enough or they are wearing their pajamas, maybe even warn them in advance. So if you are sending out an invitation email, uh, you can always add, add a line about, oh guys, uh, we would like to run the, this meeting with the cameras on. So actually people have enough time to prepare. They can, you know, uh, do some uh, adjustments to their faces and to their outfits. Uh, but it really does make a huge difference if people have the uh, cameras on. Uh, then my favorite uh, tip, actually, not the one before this one, is, this is my favorite one, is you can ask them to doodle or color in. Now you might be thinking, what is this about? This is also another kind of scientific fact, well not kind of, this is a scientific fact that actually it enhances, uh, if we are coloring in or doodling or drawing something on a piece of paper, it is enhancing our brain activity. So if we allow people to do this during the meeting, we will actually let them focus better. So try to, maybe try it even yourself right now. If you have a piece of paper next to you and a pen or a pencil, try to really like dr just draw something and uh, you will notice that you are paying attention. It's not like you're actually um, doing something else. And of course you can encourage them to close everything else, but let's just make sure we're not like it's cool, but of course you can, you can ask them to do that. And uh, what uh, Susanna did also at the start, she encouraged you to take your own notes because of course you learn so much more if you write it all down and at the end you can uh, look back and really take some key learnings that you had from the, from the meeting or event. Perfect. And now I would like to find out if you are already doing any of these things that I have just uh, mentioned. So I've talked about the icebreaker polls or any kind of uh, activity at the beginning of a webinar. I've talked about the, the clapping or gesture to, to use instead of, uh, instead of, uh, in, instead of the in-person clapping. All right. And uh, perfect. Some of you are already doing these things. That's great. Uh, some of you are not, but you're uh, inspired to try them. And I'm very glad to see that no one uh, yet <laughs> selected no, and I don't intend to. It has happened to us already. <laughs> Actually, not to, to two of us, but when we ran our German speaking uh, webinar, it happened to us. Oh, seriously. But, but I love honest people, it's, it's great. So this is why we're running it, right? Anonymously. <laughs> great, oh, wow. so I'm, I'm glad that you're inspired to, to try these things. Thank uh, you, guys. <laughs> this, this makes, I'm always afraid how this poll is going to end up, but it's, it's a little bit of courage that you put into these polls that makes you stronger, you know. <laughs> All right. So when we continue, uh, when we go through the main content, here are a few tips for you as well. Oh, sorry. First question. How many presenters do you normally have at your meetings? Is it one or is it two or three? 
four, six, or seven plus. All right. So far, it's two, two or three, or oh, there is also seven plus. So for those of you who voted for the one speaker, whenever you are doing remote meetings, I do recommend um, to have at least two speakers, unless it's a super important thing that only one person does it. Uh, even our CEO, when he runs our Monday morning meetings with the whole company, he has a moderator, a person who comes in, greets the people, and then he lets the, speak, the CEO speak makes such a difference. So whenever you are doing it remotely, I encourage you to have at least two speakers. For those of you having seven plus, it's also a bit complicated when you have more speakers and you have to make sure that you know who is in charge of what. But um, in general, um, as I said, as soon as you have more speakers, make sure that you switch how you present. Don't just share the content. So especially, as I said, uh, when you have to, for example, present some numbers or something, at least have somebody who greets you, have somebody who is in charge of the questions from the floor, et cetera, et cetera. We ran our first virtual masterclass. Um, it was, I think, two weeks ago. And we had, um, I think, seven speakers as well. Uh, one of the speakers was only, it, it was actually me, was only the host of the meeting and was only making sure that we are listening to our uh, participants, to our team, that we answer the questions on Zoom, etc. This person is such an important part of a remote meeting as well. Um, some tips on the polls that you can do um, is to make people think about the topic and ask their op uh, opinion first. Uh, so we asked you also at the beginning, like, um, what are your struggles, etc. cetera. Um, it's something that you can uh, see, like what is the opinion of the room? And you, it also gives you as a speaker, a bit of an insight to who you are speaking to when you don't see these people, of course. Uh, you can also check the knowledge and understanding of the content you're presenting. I remember one time we had a law, our lawyer explain something to us. It was very, very important, deep law stuff that we were supposed to remember. Um, what she did every five minutes, she would ask us a simple poll to see whether we are following what she's saying. At the end, she knew whether she should go back to the topic. And for us, the, uh, the listeners, we knew that she's gonna ask us something, right? Uh, so we had to be aware and we had to listen. There is a small tip for you. Whenever you are uh, using polls, make sure you check the vote count in the top right corner. And according to the number of people you have connected, uh, you know whether you should move on or wait a little bit more. Um, a question for you again. We said we we're not gonna let you just sit there. So <laughs> do you enjoy playing quiz games? And let's see, do you enjoy it, Christina? Oh, what a question. I love playing quiz games. Any, <laughs> any quiz about anything. I'm so competitive. So of course, I, I love it. <laughs> Speaking about that, uh, we will run a, uh, a quiz, uh, quiz, like Slido quiz. So we will keep you posted. You can join us. For the 29% of you that say no, it's okay. There is still a lot of people around you who loves running quizzes. So for those of you who love it, um, you can also run a quiz around numbers. So even though you are starting to present something super serious, you know, you want to know, uh, you want to deliver some numbers to your team, you can always run a quiz game and bring, bring out a little bit of competitiveness in your team. At the end, you can, uh, you can show the leaderboard and just bring out the competitive spirit. So that's regarding the quizzes and I'm giving the word to you. Thank you. So the content, of course, is very important. And of course, the interaction between uh, your content points. But we should, of course, never forget about our body language, right? It's been proven, or it's in a recent study there, um, it's been shown that there is a direct correlation between the number of views of a TED talk and the number of speakers' hand gestures. So the more we move our hands, the more attractive we are to our audience. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that we should overdo it like these two ladies, but really, if you think about it, what, online's, what the online audience can see is just that really that small part of you. So you really have to make sure that you are using that space and you are using your hands to emphasize what is important and you are uh, using the, the hands to, to change the dynamic as well. 
Uh, and of course, don't forget about playing with your voice because intonation is equally important, even more so if you are not even using the camera. So of course, if you have the camera off, it's all about the voice and you really need to practice how you pronounce your, your statements and how you, how you really play around with your voice. So the dynamic changes uh, with your voice. Uh, and here, a few interaction tips uh, to conclude this part. So we really recommend that you mix up your presentation or your meeting events every five to seven minutes. Now you can uh, you can do this uh, uh, using different uh, techniques or strategies. One of them is you can change the speakers every five to seven minutes to deliver that kind of change. So people are really like focusing, they're paying attention. They're not going to fall asleep because there is this kind of change happening. So either change the speakers every five to seven minutes or use a live poll. So use it either with Slido or any other tool, uh, use some kind of uh, online poll, or if you don't want to do it online and you just have a few people in your meeting with their cameras on, of course you can do that even with the cameras on, you can do the good old uh, hands up who, I don't know what, or just any kind of uh, poll activity that you can also do just using your hands. Why not? If the meeting size allows it. You can also integrate a Q&A round. So you can, after each uh, section, uh, after each topic, you can insert a short three minute Q&A so people can uh, straightforward ask about the topic that has just been discussed. And then if you have three topics being discussed, you can have three separate Q&As. That also really breaks the dynamic uh, of the meeting very nicely. Another way is to also add the breakout session. So you, you split people into different, uh, into different groups, or you can really do something physical. Now we uh, are now sitting uh, for most of the day, uh, or I am sitting for most of the day, and doing something physical is really welcome. Of course, that also enhances your brain activity. So doing just a couple of stretches, doing it in a group, so you really, as a speaker, encourage those people, okay, now guys, stand up and just do a stretch. It will really help to help them to focus throughout uh, the meeting and it will deliver that kind of uh, change of dynamic that we recommend every five to seven minutes. And we come to wrap up. So we are coming to an end, guys, <laughs> to an end of a presentation that you will be running. So at the end of a presentation, um, definitely have the people upload the questions that were submitted. Definitely, we want to ask you to do that. But for a little bit of uh, time, you can still listen to me. Um, the reason why you want the upvotes to happen is that you want to see what are the most important topics to address at the end. And with the, with the little upvotes, you can actually see into people's heads and see what they are thinking. So definitely, um, have that little bit of time for them uh, to look through the questions. At the end of your presentation, or as Christina mentioned, in the middle of the presentation, if you wanna do that, um, allow enough time to address the outstanding questions. As I said, especially in the remote setup, it's very important to listen to your people, to listen to your audience, and to address the questions that they have. They cannot stop you at the end of your presentation. They cannot run by the hall and tell you, hey, I wanted to ask you this. Um, they can only, the only way uh, they can ask you virtually something. Uh, so have enough time, and we couldn't stress this more. Um, it's it's going to give the people really an, an attitude that you care, and also they will feel included in your presentation. Also, dedicate enough time to get feedback. And I always say this, this is one of the toughest parts of a presentation for me, not because of the results, but usually um, it's really hard to get people to submit the feedback for you. And from my experience, the best uh, scenario is to actually have them sit and write it on the call. Um, so just have like two minutes. Um, the other day I tried to play a little bit of music and just didn't have the awkward silence and made the people write the feedback for me. Of course, once you get the feedback, make sure you actually implement it and look through it. We've been looking through the comments that people leave us uh, with and we've been trying to enhance also this presentation. So speaking about that, don't forget to write us your feedback at the end. 
Um, but it's, it's just your eyes and ears. Um, and as I said, as Christina said, you cannot see the people these days uh, whenever you're running remotely. So this is also a way how you can get in touch with them a little bit. So my question for you, do you usually collect feedback after meeting or event? Christina, do you like feedback? Uh, yes, but I had to really learn how to, how to give people feedback. Uh, of course I don't like to hurt people, but it's always nice to actually give them honest feedback. And I had to learn how to receive the bad feedback as well, of course, because no one likes that, but it actually helps you, helps you improve yourself. So that's, um, that's something. Absolutely. To <laughs> Absolutely. And with the, with the anonymous feature here in Slido, you can, you know, you don't even know so who told you that feedback. So that's good. That's good and bad as well. So yes, this is great to see that you often and always uh, collect feedback. For those of you who rarely do it, I would recommend doing it as much as possible because it's going to help you grow as a speaker, as a presenter, as a meeting designer. So over to you. Right. So we've shown you some of the things that you can do uh, in Slido as well uh, on, when you try to interact with your, with your audience. And now I would just like to briefly show you how it works if you decide to actually use uh, Slido for your interaction. So, of course, we want uh, things to be simple. So we also would like to uh, ask you to keep things simple with your Slido setup and uh, hopefully you uh, you will manage to do that uh, by using any of these options so if you are using google slides to create your presentation we are using google slides for today's webinar so our entire presentation was created in google slides and because we used our slider integration uh, by basically you uh, download the plugin slider plugin uh, we added it in onto the Chrome and uh, then we uh, logged into Slido on the right uh, pan on the right hand side you can see the panel where you can then see your Slido in your presentation and you don't need to leave the presentation anymore. So you do the entire creation of polls, creation of the Q&A slide and so on. You do everything in the Google Slides. So no need to, to leave it just do everything from Google Slides. And then once you present, you basically just uh, click the button present and you are presenting. And then uh, once you hit the slide with the interaction, it automatically uh, activates the polls and activates the questions and so on. So it's, it's very, very simple. If you would like to find out more about how you download it and so on, uh, just go to slido.com slash Google Slides. You will be able to to read about it and uh, download it there as well. Now, second option, uh, of course, uh, we are used to that the majority of people are not using Google Slides, but are using PowerPoint or some other uh, tool for presentations such as Prezi or I cannot think of any right now. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, so in that case, uh, we recommend uh, to use our Slido switcher, which is a free to download tool that you basically uh, install on the computer from which you are running your presentation. So if I'm running my presentation from this computer, I install it here, then I log in to my Slido account. And then when I already run my meeting, I grab another device, for example, the phone, where I also log into, my, uh, log into my Slido. And from this phone, I then control the screen. So I really control what is happening on the screen, whether I see my PowerPoint presentation or keynote presentation, or whether I see Slido. I basically just uh, go to switch to questions, switch to presentation, and so on. It may sound very complicated, but actually it's not. Uh, the same goes for uh, this option if you're using. So if you would like to find out more, uh, go to our website and uh, simply go to Switcher and uh, you'll be able to, to control your, your screen using that. Susanna. Uh, you can also go to slido.com slash switcher. Very easy. Yes, Susanna is the expert on the website. So slido.com slash switcher is the web uh, site you would like to look up. And then the third option, if we want to keep it just very, very simple, and if you don't actually need to use any presentation, you can simply just share your screen and uh, share a slide on there. So you can 
actually uh, then make slide a full screen in the present mode. What you then do is you control everything from your, from your laptop screen or from computer screen. You kind of only disadvantage uh, is that you actually see the mouse, but that's the only kind of downside to it. But you really control everything just from that one screen. You can also just switch uh, uh, to tabs, right? Uh, Susanna, you are an expert on this as well. You can also use Alt Tab or Swipe on Mac and just switch between Slido and the presentation you're presenting. Perfect. So that's why there are three possible setups. Uh, hopefully you can, you can pick one of them and uh, give it a go and see for yourself. But before we jump into the Q&A uh, round, I would just like to share five things with you that you can apply straight away after this webinar. So really no big preparation, but really try to change your next meeting or event in the following way. So as we've already discussed, try to really mix it up and bring that change every five to seven minutes. With all those tips that we've given you, just try to bring in it every five to seven minutes. Because of course the attention span of the online audience is even shorter than the, the audience in person. Now, second thing you can try, straight after this meeting is try to insert a little short quiz to present either updates or just to really bring some fun into the meeting. It can be just simple quiz of three questions, but really you will see how it will cheer people up and it will bring that energy into the, into the meeting. A third thing you can do, you can uh, basically, with no uh, serious preparation of the content, you can just run an entire meeting based on the Q&A. So AMA means uh, ask me anything sessions. So this is very popular, for example, if you have um, leadership in your company and people would of course like to uh, ask them some questions. So you can spend an entire, for example, 30 or 45 minutes with the leadership uh, uh, just addressing the questions from, from your people. So you collect the questions in advance, but also just during the meeting and you then uh, just basically spend the 45 minutes answering those questions. It's, it's a very popular format and we've also tried it at Slido and uh, we can only recommend it. Uh, fourth thing you can do and really you, I really, really recommend you do it is you explore your remote meeting tool. If you haven't been forced to, to work remotely until now, it's really now the time that you actually explore your tool. You never know what you will actually end up uh, finding and there are great things you can really discover there. And the fifth thing, if you really prepare, don't overdo it and keep it simple. So that's, that's my last tip, a very uh, easy one to follow. And uh, let us now look at your questions. So we so far received three questions, but uh, guys, please feel free. We have five minutes. So we would be more than happy to address any questions that you may have, but let's just start with the first one there. How long should a meeting be if we want people to pay attention, Susanna? Um, from our experience, what we've seen, the best time um, for, for example, for a webinar, so let's say that the people cannot really interact in a way, you cannot see them, so they can only interact through, for example, Slido or any other tool. Um, we've seen that 45 minutes is a good time, uh, but honestly, if you crack um, the interaction there, if, if you know how to interact with people, it can be more. We had an event, a virtual masterclass, as I mentioned before, which was an hour and a half, and we had majority of the people tell us that it was too short, um, that they would spend more time. Um, so honestly, it's up to you for, now let's say, if you are running a smaller meetings with, I don't know, 10 people, if it's engaging enough, you know, you take as much time as you need. Uh, we had a meeting the other day, our team with Christina for two hours. And um, honestly, I would even spend more time there because it was six of us. We had cameras on, we were all speaking. So it depends on the, on the scale, on the setup. Um, if it's a webinar, as I said, I would do 30 to 45 minutes. Um, if it's an event, it's up to you. Anything you want to add, Christina? Uh, no, I think you address it very well, but it also depends on the number of presenters or speakers that you have. If you have just one person speaking, of course, just I would really stick to 30, 45 minutes maximum because uh, people have no chance to, they will really drift off after that. So Absolutely. And if it's super interesting content, they, there is no chance. <laughs> 
There's a question about Google Slides that I think we addressed, but do you want to share anything else? Um, can I integrate Slido with my Google Slides? Um, maybe just, I will just repeat it once more slowly. Yes, you can integrate Slido with your Google Slides. You simply install the Slido plugin and uh, then you sign into your Slido from your Google Slides and do all the Slido activities from there. And again, slido.com slash Google Slides. <laughs> <laughs> and the last question is, if we're going to send you the video recording of this webinar. Yes, I've already answered it also on Slido, so you can see it as a participant, as a reply. But we will send recording as well as um, the, the slides that we shared, so you can also go to all the links that we mentioned. And we just got our last question. Again, if you still want to ask a question, now is the time. You can do it right now. Um, is it possible to integrate Slido, Slido into the event platform? Uh, yes, that is definitely possible. You can, uh, you can embed it into it, or I think that's the word that we use, right? So you can embed it very easily. Uh, you can find all the information and the details uh, at uh, Slido.com as well. But yes, this is, this is very simple and you can easily do that. And it is also widely used. Uh, so definitely if you and if you if you have any more questions feel free to reach out to our support um either at support at slido.com or just open a chat window on the bottom right corner bottom right yes uh, on our website and we're available to you 24 5. Um, there are also some remote um calls available so if you want to discuss your specific use case uh, we are ready to hop on a call with you and help you so with that i think we have we have finished all the questions. So now is the time to thank you, everybody. I'm going to play music. <laughs> already turned on the feedback because, of course, we cannot preach about something without doing it ourselves. So, guys, please, before, before you leave us, we would be very grateful if you could leave us your feedback. There are just two very simple questions about um, about uh, about this webinar and uh, we would of course love to improve next time so and without your feedback this is not possible we can just uh, comment on each other but uh, we are not going to be very objective so please uh, we would really 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 grateful for that thank you so much for being with us and, and as, as i mentioned here's a little bit of music now is the time for you to fill out the feedback <laughs> And with that, um, thank you, Christina, for hosting this webinar with me. It was lovely. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs> it's lovely as usual. <laughs> and yeah, let us know if there is anything we can do for you. We're happy to help all of us working safe and sound from our homes, uh, but ready to step on any question. And that you Just have. to do a little promo, we are also planning on uh, starting to run webinars with the topic of how to host a remote team building. So stay tuned. It should be advertised on our website soon uh, under our webinars page. Uh, so I guess this is a topic that might be interesting for many of us because of course, how do you do remote team building, right? When we are all at home and we cannot just go and uh, do some kind of sports activities or grab some drinks together. So stay tuned for more information. I mean, we could, but we would have to, it would be funny to look at each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, with that, I think we're going to end this call now. Uh, so again, thank you very much and good luck with your next remote meeting. Thank you, bye-bye.